Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm QuasiGamo, and I have an especially fun power build to share with you today. One that is optimized around reducing all incoming damage from any source with minimal setup requirements. And this can be achieved by focusing on four key aspects of this build, which include... First off, since not all damage can be completely avoided, that means our character will need ways to reduce the amount of incoming damage from dangerous sources. In addition, our character will want to focus on increasing their passive durability by increasing their maximum health and having features that aren't dependent on resources. Then, our character will need a way to create an additional padding of bulk to prevent our actual HP total from decreasing while being able to restore the trace amounts of damage that do manage to get through our defenses. Finally, we need the ability to incentivize enemies into prioritizing attacking our character during combat encounters to prevent the party from having to receive any unnecessary damage. To start optimizing the creation of our character today, we'll begin by choosing the otherworldly spiritualist race of the Kalashtar people. And this will give our character a plus 2 bonus to wisdom and a plus 1 bonus to charisma. And using these bonuses, we can go over what our character stats will look like with point by. Just remember that if you're rolling for stats, to make sure to keep a 13 in strength, dexterity, intelligent, wisdom, and charisma for multi-classing purposes. And here's what our stats will be. 13 strength, 13 dexterity, 12 constitution, 13 intelligence, 14 wisdom, and 13 charisma. These stats will provide our character with a total of 116 max HP at level 20. Also, being Kalashtar will start our character with a few powerful racial features, which will synergize perfectly with our build, and these, and these features are dual mind, which gives our character advantage on all wisdom saving throws. This will essentially double the chance of being able to resist mind altering effects. Effects. And in addition to that, we get the Mental Discipline feature, which gives our character psychic damage resistance, meaning that at all times we'll only be receiving half the damage from psychic sources. Now over the course of our character's journey to level 20, we'll be leveling across four different classes to accomplish the goals of our build. This will begin with three levels in the Barbarian class, starting our character with proficiencies in strength and constitution saving throws, while also being proficient in wearing medium armor and shields, which can give us up to an 8 18 AC with half plate armor and a shield. And on top of that, at first level, barbarians begin with the rage feature, which is a bonus action that grants the user several benefits for 10 rounds, which include having a resistance to physical damage types. Then at level 2, we'll be getting the reckless attack feature, which allows us to put all self caution aside while attacking to be able to do so with advantage. However, doing so will also make it so that any attacks that enemies make against us will have advantage until the start of our next turn. And at the start of our next level 3, our character will be unlocking their first subclass in the form of the Totem Warrior Primal Path. And this subclass is unique in that with Totem Spirit feature, we are allowed to choose an animal spirit to embody and modify our rage. And the perfect choice for today's build is the Bear Totem, which gives a bonus effect to our rage that allows us to resist all damage types except Psychic, which we already resist naturally, and the Bear Totem's Rage bonus does not have any stipulations or requirements attached to the resistance being provided. After achieving the ability to resist absolutely every damage type, we'll begin our multi-classing journey by leveling four times into Artificer. This will give us the ability to spell cast, and the first spell we'll be picking up on our build will be False Life. That gives our character an average of 6.5 temporary HP for one hour, and gives 5 more temporary HP when the spell is cast at higher levels. And this is followed up with the Infuse Item feature at level 5, which gives our character the ability to choose magical bonuses to grant to our gear to tune our playstyle, and the infusions we're interested in are the Enhanced Defense and Enhanced Weapon Infusion, which each provide a plus 1 bonus to gear being infused. Increasing our max AC to 19, and having our infused weapon be considered magical. Then at level 6, we'll be unlocking our Artificer subclass, and the best fit for the build would have to be the Armor subclass. This subclass will give us three notable features, starting with the tools of the trade, which will add the proficiency of being able to wear heavy armor. And that feature works in tandem with the next following feature, Arcane Armor, which allows us to select a suit of armor to wear as a cybernetic exoskeleton, while being able to bypass the strength requirement for it, and this means that our character is now capable of wearing plate mail armor without needing to have 15 strength. In addition to that, we get the Armor Model feature, which allows us to customize our Arcane Armor into one of two different models, and one we're interested in is the Guardian Armor, which comes with Thunder Gauntlets, built-in melee 
melee weapon that deal 1d8 thunder damage and have effect where when you hit a creature, that creature will have disadvantage on attacking anyone that isn't you until the start of your next turn. Then, for the final level of Artificer, we'll be getting access to an ability score increase at level 7. With this increase, we're going to want to exchange for the Heavy Armor Master Feat, but it still provides a plus 1 bonus to strength, bringing our total to 14, while also giving our character a passive 3 damage reduction to attacks that deal non-magical physical damages. Following those levels in Artificer, we'll begin multiclassing into our third class by delving six levels into Sorcerer. And this will immediately unlock another subclass at level 8, and the one that best fits is the Clockwork Soul. This subclass will provide our character with the Restore Balance feature, which will allow our character to bend fate for a more favorable outcome by using our reaction to negate the benefits of advantage or the drawbacks of disadvantage that are being applied to a roll. Then at level 9, our build will be getting the Fawn of the Magic feature, which provides our character with sorcery points equal to our level, and this new resource can be exchanged with spell slots or can be spent on various other classes. Features. And just before we get into the main feature to spend our sorcery points on, we'll be gaining another feat at level 11, and this will be the Dungeon Delver feat. It grants our character with a passive resistance to any damage dealt by traps, while also automatically having advantage against any saving throws that involve traps. And then at level 12, we're unlocking the Bastion of Law feature, which allows us to spend up to 5 sorcery points to create a magical shield. It can be used to block up to 1d8 damage per point that was spent on the shield, and the points that were used on the shield can be spent all at once or divided across five different attacks. After getting Bastion of Law, that will wrap up our levels in Sorcerer, and now for the final class of today's build, we'll be finishing off our multi-classing one last time, putting our seven remaining levels into Monk, which will give another resource to our character at level 15 in the form of key equal to our Monk level, which replenishes on short rest and can be spent on various class features like Flurry of Blows, which is a bonus action that can be used when making an attack with our main action, and it will allow allow us to follow up with two additional unarmed strikes. Then at level 16, character will be accepted into a monk monastery to choose their subclass, and we're interested in the Way of the Mercy subclass, for the Hands of the Healing feature, which can be used in place of one of our hits from Flurry of Blows, and this allows our character to touch a creature and heal them for an average of 4.5 health. In addition, we gain the Deflect Missile feature, allowing our character to use their reaction to reduce incoming damage from ranged weapons by an average of 6.5 plus our monk club. Then following up at level 17, our character will be getting our final feat, which is the tough feat, giving our character an additional 2 HP per level and increasing our total max HP to a respectable 156 max health. Also at level 17, we'll be getting the slow fall feature, which is a reaction that allows us to reduce fall damage by an amount equal to 5 times our monk level. Then, at our 5th level of monk, we gain the extra attack feature, allowing us to now make 2 attacks with our thunder gauntlets each round. And for our final class feature, we'll be unlocking the evasion feature at level 20, and this makes it so that if our character fails a dexterity saving throw, we'll only be taking half the damage, and if we succeed the saving throw will be completely avoiding the damage entirely. And now that we have the build crafted, let's go over the basic strategies of this character which remain practically the same throughout the leveling progression. In order to prepare for the adventuring day, we'll begin by casting Aid with one of our fourth level spell slots, which will give our character and two other party members 20 more max HP for a total of 176 max HP and use the other 4th level spell slot to cast False Life for an additional 20 to 23 temporary HP. Then finish off by spending 5 sorcery points to give ourselves a 5d8 ward with Bastion of Law, and replenish our empty points by converting spell slots into sorcery points. Then when it comes to combat scenarios, essentially our goal is to rage and reckless attack to make it so that our attacks with the Thunder Gauntlet at advantage, while also giving all enemies advantage to hit you, and make it so that your main target has disadvantage from hitting anyone that isn't you, while providing yourself resistance to all damage types and having immense amounts of flat damage reduction. Now what does this mean in terms of how damage resistant our build is? 
First off, whenever Rage is active, we're able to cut all damage in half. Then, by using Bastion of Law, we can reduce any of the incoming resisted damage by 5 to 40 for an average reduction of 22.5. On top of that, we have features for each of the following three cases, which can be exemplified at the highest level of gameplay with an Ancient Red Dragon. Our first case involves the dragon's regular attacks, which involves a bite and two claw attacks. The average damage of these three attacks after all of our damage reductions becomes just over four damage per round, meaning that it would take the dragon until the sixth round of combat to be able to break through our temporary HP with attacks. Then for our second case, if the dragon were to grapple our character and fly up to an altitude of 200 feet to drop them for a maximum amount of fall damage, even if all 20 of the d6s rolled 6, our character would take between 0 and 20 damage, averaging somewhere around 2 to 3 fall damage on a max, max roll. Then for our final case scenario, if the dragon were to use its fire breath, which even with our advantage on the dexterity saving throw, our character has too low of a dexterity score to actually be able to pass the DC of 24. And this attack normally averages around 91 fire damage, however that damage is cut into one quarter due to our resistance and the evasion feature. Then after the reduction of Bastion of Law, then we're we're left with an average damage of 0.25. All of this considered, our build is practically invulnerable even to the likes of an ancient red dragon. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope that you found this character build informational and entertaining. And if you did, please consider clicking that like button and let me know what your thoughts in the comment section down below. And subscribe if you're interested in watching more character builds like this or other gaming content. This is Quasi Gamo, signing off.